developing story overseas involving that U.S. Navy destroyer. Seven sailors missing right now after their ship collided with a tanker off the coast of Japan. Questions abound as to how this could have happened. We want you to look at this new video of the USS Fitzgerald limping back into port in Japan. This as U.S. and Japanese ships and aircraft are frantically conducting search and rescue missions, hoping to find those missing sailors. Five people were medevaced off of the boat. We're going to kick off our coverage with ABC's Matt Gutman reporting from Los Angeles. Matt, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Dan and Paula. Hard to overstate how serious an incident this was. Now, the Navy is still searching for those seven missing sailors. They have multiple search planes scouring the water, but because of the damage that you just saw is so severe, it's also possible those sailors could still be in the wreckage on board. Just minutes ago, we learned that a total of five sailors had to be medevaced, including the commander of the ship. This morning, the USS Fitzgerald has been tugged back to port, but at least seven sailors remain missing. The Navy saying multiple sailors were injured in the monstrous collision with the container ship. Five sailors hurt badly enough they had to be medevaced. One of them, the ship's commanding officer. The Japanese Coast Guard leading the initial rescue. You can see responders crowded near the wreckage to extract the wounded. Helicopter footage shows the destroyer's mangled midsection, the damage caving in compartments, destroying ship machinery and its radio room. The Navy saying damage both above and below the waterline caused major flooding. Those red hoses seen pumping seawater out of the belly of the ship, which typically has a crew of nearly 300. The Navy says this 30,000-ton container ship and the much smaller 9,000-ton U.S. destroyer collided in open water 56 miles southwest of Yokosuka, Japan. The Navy telling ABC News this morning that the extent of the personnel injuries aboard the ship is still being assessed. Now, there are two major questions going forward. Which of the ships had the right of way? And perhaps a bigger issue, that even though it was the dead of night, how did a ship with some of the most sophisticated radar and sonar on the planet neither see or manage to avoid something the size of a small island bearing down on it? Dan, Paula. Yeah, those are some questions we're going to be addressing in just a moment. Matt Gutman, thanks for your reporting this morning. And joining us now from Washington is retired Marine Colonel and ABC News contributor Steve Ganyard. Steve, good morning to you. And you just heard Matt's uh, question, the most glaring one that we all have. These ships aren't traveling swiftly. They're on one another's radar. How could a collision have happened? Paul, it, it, it's, it's hard to imagine how it could have. You, as Matt said, these are two very sophisticated ships uh, and they should have seen each other. On the other hand, this happened really just about 10 miles outside of the mouth of Tokyo Bay, which is one of the busiest ports in the world. It was the middle of the night. Uh, and so oftentimes what happens in these collisions at seas, it's a series of mistakes on both ships that lead to a tragic event. We are, as everybody knows, at a, a time of heightened fears over North Korea. What kind of impact could, could taking a, a destroyer like this out of commission, uh, what, what kind of impact could that have on our ability to defend ourselves and our allies? Dan, the Fitzgerald is one of the most sophisticated ships in the U.S. Navy. It has a special radar and a special set of missiles that it could actually intercept exo-atmospherically in space uh, any kind of North Korean missile that may be shot at Japan or South Korea or U.S. bases in the region. So the Navy's going to want to backfill this very quickly because the Fitzgerald is going to be out of service for a long, long time. Steve Ganyard, thank you.